Hi, my name's Rosie Piercy and welcome to the Therapist Marketing Podcast. Uh, my name, as I said, is Rosie. I'm a chiropractor and a clinic director and I find marketing really interesting and I want to help all therapists feel more confident and in control of their marketing. So today I want to talk to you about online marketing and why it's vital for your therapy business. Now, most of us as therapists are really good at what we do, but marketing, maybe we don't like the idea of selling ourselves. Maybe it feels a bit icky, a bit, I don't know, part of me always thinks a word of kind of like snakes, snake oil salesman, like I'm trying to sell something that maybe people don't want or is a bit, you know, that I know it's great, but how do I put that across to people without being brash and bold and in your face, which is often how maybe a lot of us think about marketing. So... I want to talk to you today about why we should do it and how to do it so that you don't feel like that about it. So why should you do it? Because basically a lot of us will say that the word of mouth marketing is like the best thing and it is the best thing. You know, if if one of your patients speaks to someone else and says, like, oh, I, I saw this amazing physio or this amazing um, counsellor and they really changed my life and they helped me, then that's like the best marketing you can get. Well, kind of online marketing is... Um, is word of mouth, you know, on steroids almost. It goes, it's it's a bigger version of it. You know, if, if you have a, a Google review or a Facebook review or, or something, then rather than one person telling another person, it's one person telling potentially thousands of people how amazing you are. And that's what we want to see. So that's one reason why you do it. But I think another reason, thing to think about when you're thinking about the marketing is, is what it's not about. So particularly if we're thinking about social media and, and that kind of thing, people often get caught up into how many likes they have, how many post shares, how many interactions. And whilst that's all important, that's not what marketing is necessarily all about. So the three main reasons why it's really important for your business as a therapist is that social media and other marketing um, should drive traffic to your website. Because obviously you have more control over your website than you have, say, Facebook and Instagram. If Facebook suddenly decided it cost a hundred pounds a day to be on Facebook, would you st- still want to do it? Probably not. Whereas if you can get people onto your website, then you can maybe get them to sign up for a newsletter, or at least they'll be more enticed to book in with you as a patient because they'll be on your page and you can tell them much more about yourself. Marketing also helps you build brand authority. So brand authority is saying that your brand, and whether you like it or not, as a business, you kind of are falling into brands now. People more think of it like that. You have an identity as a business. And that identity is important, and we'll talk about that more in in another blog perhaps. But if you build your authority about the thing that you treat, you know, the, the problem that you know about, with amazing content, so brilliant blogs, maybe a wonderful social media channel of you talking about whatever it is that you're treating, then that helps people know that you're the person to go to. So, for instance, if you're, say, a physio who treats runners, if you write blogs, put out social media posts, um, talking about how much you know about running, and not just how much you know, but how much you can help people with running, then people know that you're the go-to person for that. It helps build your authority in that area. And that's really important. And the other thing is something that's called know, like, and trust. So it's really important factor in all business because people do business with people, not with companies. So if they know you, like you, and trust you, they're more likely to do business with you, particularly in something like healthcare. Because when people come to you, whatever therapy you're doing, they're usually at a vulnerable point. They're in pain, whether that's mental pain or physical pain, and they, they want someone to help them. But they also may be more unsure about things. So if they've already kind of met you, in inverted commas, online, if they've seen you um, on social media, if they've read your blogs, so often people will investigate having a form of treatment for quite a while you know unless they've had like I don't know unless they've had a massive car accident or something yesterday and now they need treatment today then they were maybe thinking about having some help for their anxiety some treatment for their ankle um you know trying to sort of that niggly neck pain that they've had for ages they may have spent quite a lot of time researching it and if they've come across you your channel or so your facebook or your instagram or your twitter or whatever you like to do or they've read some of your blogs then they will be getting to know you a bit more. And if they keep reading your stuff that you're putting out, your content, then they start to like you and they start to trust you. 
Now, when they decide to make that to make that leap to have treatment, they're more likely to go with someone that they know, like, and trust than someone they've never seen before. So although it may not get you patients through the door on day one, it's building that reputation online as much as offline that can help. So how do you do this? How do you, do, how do you market yourself in a way that you feel comfortable with and that you don't feel flashy and bold and kind of like a used car salesman. Well, I have I have sort of seven top tips. But I think one thing I want to say before I go into these is that everyone is different. So even if you say, so I'm a chiropractor, even if you're a chiropractor like me, and maybe we even went to the same university, maybe you went to ACC, maybe you even in my class, and we graduated from the same, same, at the same time, we will be different. And everyone is different so you have to kind of do your marketing in a way that is makes you feel comfortable because otherwise you'll you'll have on this if you like this face of what you're doing which won't be who you are and then when people come and meet you it won't be the same and then that'll make people feel a bit oh this isn't quite right so although it's good to look around and see what people do do what you feel comfortable with because then that is more authentically you and then that will come across better than trying to do something you're not, if that makes sense. And you'll feel more comfortable doing it, so you're more likely to do it. So, here are my tips. Talk about what you know. So, as a, as a chiropractor, I'm very happy talking about pain, neck pain, back pain, pregnancy pain, headaches, migraines, all that kind of thing. Really happy about talking about that and how to avoid injuries. Wouldn't talk about mental health. Wouldn't really talk about nutrition. Yes, I have some opinions on it. I have some knowledge on it, but it's not my area of expertise. So I would generally only talk about things I'm really super comfortable talking about online or in blogs and things like that. So that's tip number one. Number two, share what you feel happy with. So social media is quite a, a sherry thing and you'll see some people sharing all all aspects of their life, what they ate, what, what for breakfast, what they ate for dinner, what, what their kids are like, what their kids are doing, all kind of thing. Now, that's that's fine for them. Obviously, on social media, we need to keep, if we're, you know, as practitioners, as therapists, we need to keep some sort of professional distance from our patients. So don't feel like you have to share details of your personal life that you don't want to, because you don't have to. Um, I have children, in and... Um, in one of my podcasts I have for my, my clinic, Total Health, um, I, I always refer to them as my eldest or my youngest. I don't I don't talk about their names um, because I don't want that to be out there. It's you know I don't I don't want to share that particularly. Um, so you can and I don't put pictures of my children in my social media because I don't want to and their dad doesn't want me to. So we we try and keep that side of you know I say that they're there because that impacts on my life and when I'm available for clinic and all sorts of things and also makes people know that I'll understand what it's like to have a family life but you don't have to share everything so don't feel pressured to do anything you don't want to um the next tip is three to one ratio so this is a quite a common ratio of three to one posts so every three um posts you put out that are advice then you put out one post saying that you do something or you sell something or you have this service. It's quite a nice ratio. And it also makes it feel like the marketing is less selly because a lot of what you're just putting out is really useful advice for people and people like that because it helps them. So three to one ratio is a good way of thinking about it. Um, Another thing is to mix up what you post. So to make it more fun, don't just stick up um, memes or quotes because that gets pretty old. Um, and also, I mean, they're great. We have them. Um, but but don't only do that. Um, maybe stick some videos in. You can have some funny memes. Maybe you have a question, you know. Um, at Total Health, we were um, changing. We have sweets on the desk. Um, and we were trying to decide which sweets to have, so we posted what sweets do you want. We got a version, I think it was lemon lemon sherbets, mint humbugs, and toffees, because they're all individually wrapped. Which one, which ones would you like? And people posted on that, and then when we got them in, we took a picture and said, hey, come and get your lemon sherbet, or oh, actually I think the mint humbugs one. And they were very nice, maybe a little bit too nice. Um, but that all helps people be engaged, and it makes it more fun. And, and I must admit, the ones that we... 
we get the often the most interactions on are the ones of oh look a butterfly's landed in clinic and it's sitting on one of our chairs and taking a picture of that or we had one where we have some barometers total health is a very our uh, um interior or decor which again something we can talk about another time is shabby chic um and we've set it up as a kind of boutique kind of looking place so we have old barometers on the wall and we had one saying yep it's raining and they all said rain so things like that make it more fun it doesn't have to all be about the therapy that you do it, you can put a bit of life in there because people want to see the life that, that is in the clinic or in the area that you're treating but again don't don't share more than you feel happy with the next tip is to use platforms that you feel happy about using so if you don't like twitter don't do Twitter. If you really don't understand Instagram, don't do Instagram. Just start where you feel comfortable. Obviously, if you're a big multinational business with a million, a whole social media team and one person whose sole life was dedicated to Twitter, you would do everything. But if you're a small clinic, if you're a one-man band, then that's that's a bit much and it's a lot of pressure. So make life easy on yourself. Just start on the stuff that you want to do. If you really like Facebook, if you use it all the time personally, then, then just stick to Facebook, and then when, maybe when you feel comfortable, link your inst- set up an Instagram and link it to Facebook, so you can push things across from one to the other, and that makes it easier. And then, as you get more comfortable, more happy doing it, then you can start linking out to other things. But if you're if you're not sure, then start at what you feel happy with, and then grow from there. Don't try and do everything all at once and feel completely overwhelmed and stop. And then the, the final kind of big point is consistency. So try and be consistent about what you're doing. So work out how much time you have to spend and what you can reasonably do and then stick to it. So if you're going to send out a newsletter to your patients, then decide, can you do this weekly, fortnightly or monthly? Decide on it and stick to it. And if necessarily schedule time in your clinic diary, I know it won't be time seeing patients, but time to write that newsletter and send it out because that consistency helps build trust people get used to you turning up at the same time you know this newsletter coming in every week and go oh yeah that's that newsletter or every fortnight or every month if you miss it you're like oh what happened and the same about putting out blogs or if you do a social media um, posts then try and keep it consistent so make sure it's something you can stick to because it's better to say right well I can't do it weekly I'll do it fortnightly and religiously do it fortnightly and then as maybe it gets easier or you get a bit more time then step it up to weekly if you can if you want to um one thing that can help is having a content strategy so you don't have to think about what you're going to do so i have written a blog on this um and i'll I'll put a link in the show notes to the blog on how to create a an easy uh, marketing strategy if you're a therapist so therefore, there you go, I've outlined the, the reasons why you should be doing online marketing and ways you can do it a bit more easily and make yourself feel a bit more comfortable about it. I think it's it's worth think, realizing also to just start go, just start gently and then build your confidence and try not to feel pressure to do everything all at once because that then that is then overwhelming. But if you just do a little at a time and build up, then you get much more consistency and more effect than than either doing nothing at all or trying to do all at once and, and it just being too much. Brilliant. Well, I hope that's helped you. If you want more information about your marketing, then do pop to my website, rosiepearcy.com, um, where you can read my blogs and I have a free a free step um, course for attracting patients to your clinic, which you can do as well. Brilliant. Hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.